Hello learners. In this lecture, we will see what is an airport and how the classification of an airport has been done. So, an airport is a location where an aircraft, such as airplanes, can take off or can do the landing activity. It is a facility where the passengers connect from ground transportation to the air transportation. Aircraft may also be stored or maintained at an airport. An airport should have a runway for the takeoff, which we usually have a for the takeoff operation and landings and buildings such as hangars and terminal buildings are the places where people come and all. So that is the terminal buildings, right? So this is all about an airport. Now, how the classification is done? So airport are classified into different types. So first is based on takeoff and landing. The first one. The second is based on aircraft approach speed. The third one is based on the function of the airport. Fourth one is based on the geometric design. And the fifth one is based on the aircraft wheel characteristics. So we'll try to see them one by one. First is based on the takeoff and landing. So based on takeoff and landing, aircraft can have different ways to take off and land. Conventional airplanes accelerate along the ground until sufficient lift is generated for the takeoff and reverse the process for the landing. Some airplanes can take off at a low speed, this being a short takeoff. So further, we have four categories here. The first one is the conventional takeoff and landing airport, which you can call it as CTOL, right? So here, what will happen that the runway length, we'll try to see what is runway and all in the upcoming lectures. So here, the runway length is greater than 1,500 meter. Then we call this as a conventional takeoff and landing airport. Next one, what we have is a reduced takeoff and landing airport, which you can denote it as RTOL. And here the runway length is from 1000 to 1500 meter. Then we have a short takeoff and landing airport, which is denoted by STOL. And here the runway length is from 500 to 1000 meter. And the last one, what we have is a vertical takeoff and landing airport, which is denoted by VTOL. And here the operational area, usually what we get is 25 to 50 square meter. So this classification, what we have seen, they all are based on takeoff and landing. So the next classification is based on the functions. So in the first, what we have is a civil aviation. And the second, what we have is a military aviation. So further in the civil aviation, we have a domestic and we have international. We'll try to see them. So this is one of the two major categories of flying representing all non-military aviation, both private and commercial. So under the domestic, a domestic airport is an airport that handles only the flights within the same country, right? So if any flights are going from within a country, let us say from Delhi to Mumbai or from Mumbai to Calcutta or from Calcutta to Chennai. So this is within the country we are going, right? So it becomes a domestic airport. So domestic airports do not have a custom and immigration facilities. Of course, uh, within the country, we don't require this facility. So in the domestic airport, we don't require this. But when you go to the international, uh, international airport is an airport with customs and border control facilities enabling the passengers to travel between the countries, right? If you want to travel from one country to another country, then we will be taking the international airports. So most of the airports, what we have in India, the most of them are international airports. Like we have uh, Indira Gandhi International Airport in Delhi. Then we have Rajiv Gandhi International Airport in Hyderabad. Then we have uh, Mumbai International Airport, right? So there are, so what actually happens is we'll be having two different buildings. One is for the international and one is for the domestic separate airport in the sense in the same airport itself, we'll be having a domestic arrival and departure. And then on the next to that building, we'll be having an international arrival and the departures, right? Yeah. So next one, what we have is a military aviation. Military aviation is a use of military aircraft and other flying machines for the purpose of conducting or enabling the aerial warfare, including the national airlift capacity, to provide logistical supply to the forces stationed in the theater or along the front, right? So again, then we have it, we have a military aviation. So this thing is based on the functions. So next is based on the geometric design. A properly designed airport geometry provides optimal efficiency in the traffic operation with maximum safety. Geometric design of runway is considered as a major part of a design of a runway. So these are certain classification which has been made. We'll try to see who has given this classification, right? So here, what we can see is we have the airport type that we have airport type A, we have B, we have C, the D and E. And then based on the basic runway length, what is the runway length? What should be the maximum runway length? What is the minimum runway length, right? 
So let us say if you have an airport type A, then maximum is over 2100 meter and minimum is also 2100 meters my runway length, right? Runway in the length, let us say this is, I'm showing a small, yeah, this is my runway. And from here, this is, this will be the threshold. And from here, the flight will take off, right? So what should be this runway length? Based on that, we have done the classification. Yeah. So the next airport type is B, which has maximum runway length of 2099 and minimum it has to be 1500 meter. Then for C, it has to be 1499 and minimum has to be 900 meter and so on, right? Yeah. And similarly, you have this width of runway pavement and then we have the maximum longitudinal grade. So again, width of the runway pavement for airport type A, it has to be 45, for B also it has to be 45 meter. Then for, for, for C, it has to be 30 meter. For D, it has to be 22.5 meter. And for E, it has to be 18 meter. Similarly, it's the maximum longitudinal grade, what you need to keep. So it is 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1 and two and two respectively for D and E types of aircraft. So this is completely based on the geometric design. All this, some research might have been carried out. And based on that, these are the standards given and this is what we try to follow when we want to set up any airport next is based on the aircraft wheel characteristics aircraft wheels are an important component of landing gear system with tires mounted upon them they support the entire weight of aircraft during the taxi takeoff and the landing a typical aircraft wheel is a lightweight strong and made from aluminum alloy some magnesium alloy wheels are also existing so again, it's given here code number one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Next, we have this single isolated wheel load. It is in terms of kg. It is 45,000 kg. For code number two airport, it is 34,000. Then for code number three, it is 27,000, 20,000, 13,000, 7,000, and 2,000, and so on. So under that, for this tire pressure, it has to be 8.5 kg per centimeter square. It has to be 7 kg per centimeter square, 7, 7. Then it has to be 6, 5, and 2.5. So again, all these are the standards given by uh, ICAO. We'll try to see what is that ICAO. So based on that, we try to classify the airport. So whatever we have seen, no, the same thing you can see it here. Uh, as I mentioned, ICAO stands for International Civil Aviation Organization has classified the airports on the basics on the basis of runway, the length and the pavement strength. So I'm referring to different textbooks. So this is what you can see. The airports are classified by various agencies. The most popular one being being the ICAO, right? So the airport classification aims at achieving the uniformity in the de design standards. The classification by ICAO is based in the following two ways. The code letters A to E, as we saw there, A, B, C, D, are used, has shown in the table 1.4, to indicate the basic runway length, width of the runway pavement, and maximum longitudinal grade. We'll see that again. And number 1 to 7 are mentioned to indicate the single isolated wheel load and the tire pressure. So you can see it here. Again, as I mentioned, A to E is there. So the airport type is A, B, C, D, and E. And what is the basic runway length? We already seen that it's the same thing what you can see here. If it is a airport, it has to be over 2100 and minimum it has to be 1200. And what is the width of the runway of payment, right? When I say width of the runway payment, let us see if this is my runway, drawing a rough diagram here, then this should be the width of that, right? This is the width of that. So width of the runway payment, if you belong to airport A, then it has to be how much? 45 meter, then this width has to be 45 meter. So in this way, all these things will be given here. Next is maximum longitudinal grade. Yeah. Next again, as I mentioned, the number one to seven, you can see the code number one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And based on that, again, we have this single isolated wheel load, right? So why this wheel load is required? Because if you have seen an aircraft, what will happen? Front, we are going to have one tire, right? And then at the back, we'll be having two tire. And as we saw, this entire weight will be taken this by these particular tires. So that is why it becomes important for us. And also the tire pressure is also important for us, right? So that is why it's written, all these things are given here. So if it is single isolated wheel load, it has to be 45,000 kg. For that, the tire pressure has to be 8.5. If it is a code number two, then it has to be 34,000 and the tire pressure will be seven kg per centimeter square, right? So thus an airport classified as B2 would have a basic runway width of 1500 meter to 2099. That means it is telling this one, let us say, if it is a B airport, it will have 1500 as a minimum and 2099. 
and would be capable of handling a single isolated wheel load of 34,000 kg with a tire pressure of 7 kg per Yeah, finally, you can write down in this way also. It depends on you how you want to write down. You can put a table in this way and write down the code and in this way and uh, you can put a table in this way, right? Or you can try to follow the previous things what I have shown you. It all depends on you how you want to write them. Yeah, so I hope you got an idea how the airport has been classified, especially the ICAO that is Indian Civil, uh, that is International Civil Aviation Organization has given all this classification. So based on requirement, we try to adopt all these things and based on that, we try to do the airport, right? Yeah, in the next lecture, we'll try to see the different topics. So we'll see you back in the next lecture. Thank you.